A defibrillator is a device used for the treatment of sudden cardiac arrest. Now, sudden cardiac arrest is the sudden and abrupt loss of heart functionality. Not to be confused with a heart attack, which is a blocked blood vessel, which damages the heart. So this has to do with the electrical conduction system in the heart. So this disease in itself, sudden cardiac arrest, um, kills about 1,500 people per annum in New Zealand. Wow. So quite high. Um, but a defibrillator is a device used to increase the chances of survival by about 40%. In a nutshell, it's a portable device um, used for assessing the heart rhythm and delivering a shock to the patient to restore a normal heart rhythm if required. With sudden cardiac arrest, it's all about early defibrillation. So that's getting the patient shocked as soon as possible. So chances of resuscitation, they decrease by seven to 10 percent every minute after collapse. So an ambulance, for instance, do ambulances have defibrillators on board? Yeah, they do, yeah, yeah they do. But the question I've got to ask you is, will they arrive in time? So the ideal shock time from patient collapse to shock is three to five minutes. Okay. So would an ambulance arrive in that time at your premises? It's a risk. It is a risk. And if the ambulance isn't gonna arrive, where is the nearest defibrillator to you? So Jake, I don't know an awful lot about defibrillators, but one thing I have noticed over the past year or so is that they're becoming increasingly more popular. Um, so I imagine there's a lot of different brands out there. Why would someone want to pick a heart sign monitor? Good question, Pat. And you're right, there are a lot of models, and there's probably three main reasons that somebody would choose a heart sign. Okay. There are many, but three main ones. Yep. Um, firstly, the high water and dust protection. Sure. So rated at IP56. Yep. Great for um, high moisture environments and high dust environments, you know, workshops, public pools, things like that. The second reason is they've got an integrated pad and battery pack. So that's a one change maintenance thing. So what, what does that mean practically? It practically means that there's one date. Okay. So both the batteries and the pads expire on the same date. Oh, great. Just change it out once. Okay, awesome. Yep. Finally, they are very compact, portable and lightweight. Yep. So this one here is actually only 1.1 kilos, very yep. lightweight. Nice and light. So as well as being portable and being able to take it around, mm. it also comes with a range of mounting options. So you can you know, hang it on a wall, put it in a visible and accessible location, sure. you know, make it available to the public. So the key difference between these two is the real-time CPR feedback. Okay. So defibrillation is the easy part, CPR is hard. What do you mean by that? Well, with defibrillation, you're following instructions and pressing a shock button. Sure. CPR relies on you doing something mm -hmm. and actually delivering the compression to yourself. So it's great to get some feedback and some prompts on how to do that better. How, how does the device actually prompt you? It will tell you things like good compression. So if you're doing it right, it'll yeah. tell you you're doing it right. Okay. Um, with things like pressing too slow, it'll tell you to go faster. Mm -hmm. If you're doing your compressions too soft, it'll tell you to press harder. It's just yes. all about getting that optimum rate of CPR to the patient. So Jake, for someone like me who hasn't received any training in these devices, um, how easy are they to use? They're very, very simple, Pat. Okay. Um, they are designed as a public access defibrillator. Okay. So designed for anybody with no training to use. Okay. What if I do do something wrong though? Well, there's not a lot you can do wrong if you follow the instructions. Now, I know that's hard during a panic, yes. but they are clear instructions and they do continue to cycle through. Now, um, one of the things that can be of concern is putting it on a device, this device on somebody that doesn't need it. Sure. So in that case, the defibrillator itself will determine whether there's a shockable rhythm. So if it determines one of two things, a normal heart rhythm or a non-shockable rhythm, yes. it will not shock the patient. Okay. So if you're a healthy person, yep. you place these pads on you, it will not let you shock them. That's good, good safety measure. It is indeed. Yep. If anyone had any further questions or wanted to know things like pricing, what can they do? Well, the first instance, they can reach out to one of us here sure. at Antec, um, obviously via our website, email, um, the phone. Yes. We're available to talk to you, help you through. Um, additional to that, uh, HeartSign have their own electronic media platform. So that on YouTube, they've got their own channel with plenty of videos on setting up the device, maintaining the device, using the device. Cool. Um, they're very helpful. 
Mm. Uh, we also send out a training DVD with every single device. So if you're needing to use the device or train staff at a later date or familiarise yourself with how to set it up and maintain it, mm. that's all there in the DVD as well. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us and thank you for joining us too. I hope this has been useful. I've learned plenty and I'm sure you have too. We'll see you again soon. See ya.